Fair, it's the American Flute Fair, by Anna, Anna Leach. And if you didn't get programs as you came in, we, uh, they are placed right up in the center, at the center aisle, and I think there's some over um, at this door as well. So to let you know, we will be having uh, a brief intermission that will come in between the remote tambourine and the last spring. We'll have a short little 10 minute intermission just so that you know. For those of you who have never been to a flute choir concert before or never seen a flute choir, it's, uh, it's a fairly new invention actually. Really the last 30 years to see the um, growth of the flute choir. As in any choir, we have of different voices, starting with the lowest voice, which is the bass flute, which you may have never seen before. Aaron, if you can show, hold up your bass flute and see it's very long. It has a curved head joint, so that otherwise, without that, there'd be no way you could reach the keys or you know, belong over here. That wouldn't work so well. So, if you give us a little sample as to how low that instrument goes.
which is who's listed as the composer on here. It's arranged by Anne Cameron Pierce, who does a lot of arranging for flute choirs. She directs her own flute choirs in Raleigh, North Carolina. So she knows the ensemble well, and she puts out a lot of really neat pieces. This is a beautiful piece, we hope that you enjoy it.
1500s. Didn't know he was a composer, did you? Uh, this particular arrangement is done by Victoria Jica, who has made many arrangements of hymns and of folk tunes. She's also the former editor of Flute's Talk magazine. So for flutists in the audience, you're probably familiar with, with her work. She lives in Wisconsin now, and she's also a certified master knitter. So flutists have various interests. They are multifaceted pieces. They're multifaceted people. So this is green sleeved with a little bit of a twist.
programs are. We have um, sign-up sheets if you can leave your email or your uh, address so that we can contact you for future programs. And you may have also noticed these beautiful blue donation boxes out there. And this is an all-volunteer group. Nobody here is getting paid. But still, a concert like this does cost between three and four hundred dollars to put on because uh, we have to buy the music, we have to do the copying, and there are other administrative kinds of things. So if you've got a little spare change laying in your pocket or something <laughs> that you just didn't want to you know, carry around any longer, or um, it's also a way for you to let us know that you enjoy the concert. We, um, we're a nonprofit, so we don't charge admission, but we are just more than happy to take any donations, of course. Our next piece is uh, the tambourine. And you may have noticed that word looks a lot like tambourine. A tambourine is actually a small two-headed drum of Arabic origin. The first mention of it written down anywhere goes back to 1080, so it's an ancient, ancient instrument. Um, but it also refers to a particular type of piece, like what we have here. The piece we are calling is not, it's not just the title, it's also the style, the genre, which is a dance tune played on a flute and accompanied by a drum. Well, we don't have a drum, but we have, we will have a drone throughout the piece. You will notice this driving, or this recurring note that happens very regularly all the way through. That's what keeps the beat going so the dancers know when to move and it also anchors everything else. And even though the people who are assigned to that part, it doesn't seem like the most exciting part to play, they're very important into keeping this piece going. Uh, Jean-Philippe Renaud is a, well, if you're familiar with early operas and ballets, you're familiar with Rameau's music, he often included tambourines in his operas because during that time an opera had to have dances in it. So opera companies included musicians and singers and dancers as well. This particular one, uh, versions of it have appeared in operas, but uh, he trans it first started as a keyboard piece and has been adapted by Urban Monroe, one of the you know, flute gods of America or arrange for flute choir. And so we hope you enjoy it, and then afterwards, you can stretch your legs for a little bit, and we hope you'll be around for the second hand. <coughs> 